So today I want to take you on a quick tour of the KillerView E3 Video Encoders user interface. Let's get started. Okay, so we're signed into the E3. This is the user interface, and I have to tell you, this is one of the nicest UIs that I've seen of the various decoders that I've had a chance to test and explore. So looking at from left to right on the top, it starts with the KillerView branding logo. We're on the home page. Now, if we come down along the left side, this is the home page for the HDMI input. Then we have an SDI input here. This is the home page with all the settings for the SDI input. And this is the home page for the mix input. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But let's go back up to the HDMI input and just take a look around this page. So you can see we have a preview window here. Over here, we have all our video settings. So you could see the video encoding format H.264, the resolution, the bit rate. If we click on the settings cog, you can see we can go in here and we can adjust the different settings, the encoding, scaling, frame rate, bit rate, et cetera. So you have all that information available to you here. You also have your audio settings here. You could see the audio encoding channel and the sampling and all that. So Right here, you can see we have the enable button, so we could disable this HDMI input if we so choose. However, we're gonna leave it enabled for now. You can see the network traffic stats, you can see the memory usage, the storage, and the CPU upload. And then down across here, you can see you have your safe area, you have your crossbars, and then we'll talk about these icons in a minute when we talk a little bit more about the media user management. Down on the bottom of the screen here, you can see the streaming services that the encoder is set up to send out to. Now, these are ones that I've created with the exception of the NDI HX that's there by default. To add additional services, you simply just click on the Add button, and then you could see you could add your streaming service here. The window comes up. You have the different streaming protocols, RTSP, RTMP, RTMPS, SRT, HLS, and TS-UDP. You have your audio channels, your service ports, your session IDs, and a bunch of other parameters to configure. So that's all done right here just by clicking the Add button, and then the service will appear down in the list here below. Moving across the top, if we go to the Settings page, you could see here we have our basic settings. You could rename the device. We have our network settings, our user management settings, so we could add additional users. We have our area and time, so you could set your time server and things like that. And then we have our system settings here. We have uh, the ability to restore a backup and then also the ability to upload a firmware update if one is available. So here we're looking at an HDMI input source coming from the set of the Swartz Talking Sports podcast. If we click down to the SDI input, this is an input coming from a HyperDeck. This is the intro to our show this week. And by the way, if you haven't checked out Schwartz Talking Sports or the Charles Oakley show, I'll put a link down in the video description. So you can see here on the SDI input, we have all of the same settings available to us that we had on the HDMI input. And notice that the streaming services are different. So you can stream one input to a series of streaming services. You can stream the SDI input to a set of different services if you would like. Again, all of the same features as we discussed before. Now let's talk about the mix. If we click on mix, we're going to see a similar page, but notice that it's disabled. Once we enable the mix, it's going to disable both the HDMI and the SDI channels because it's going to mix them together here. So let's do that. And we get the message that it's going to disable the other two individual inputs. That's fine. So you see here, it's creating a picture-in-picture -picture effect. This is the HDMI input, and this is the SDI input here. All of the same settings and features, and again, you have your streaming services that will appear down here. You can do different things with the mix if you want. You can actually flip the sources so that you can have the HDMI source be the main source and the SDI source be the picture-in-picture. You can also come into layout settings and create a side by side if you wanted. They actually refer to that as picture by picture. So that's available to you as well. Here you can add overlays to the images. And this is available on all of the inputs the HDMI input, the SDI input, and also the mix input. But we're not going to get into that right now. 
but you can create text overlays, image overlays, lower thirds, things like that. You can add your lower third media here and bring it into the E3. And then once it's in the E3, you can add it here and create your lower thirds and your text overlays and things like that. So pretty cool. I'm going to go back to the HDMI input and now you can see it's disabled and so is the SDI input. It's disabled as well. And again, that is because we have the mix enabled. If I were to disable the mix, then we can go back to the HDMI and enable the HDMI and enable the SDI. And you can see the SDI is back and I didn't say OK when I enabled the HDMI, and now the HDMI should be back as well. So there's a brief tour of the E3's user interface. Like I said earlier, I think it's one of the nicer user interfaces that I've seen of the decoders I've had a chance to play with and explore. In the next video, I'll show you how to create a couple of the streaming services. If you want to see more content like this, then click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.